Yellowstone, Colorado. Here we are right at the apogee of the full moon. You know what that means? That means where it just hits its peak and becomes what we call a full moon. Now that's just a little planet hanging out there in the sky, a tiny little thing orbiting around this here other planet that we happen to live on, you know. And there's a lot of mystery surrounding this old moon, which somehow reflects the sun, brings it all in at night. So you have light at night when there is no daylight and there's only shadow and darkness. And the moon comes along and enlightens that darkness, helps it to see what's really there in the darkness, creeping around and taking care of business. <laughs> So the advent of this full moon, this reflective energy that takes the light of the sun and creates a light source for us in the middle of the night, this beautiful being that she is, that beautiful moon, you know, she hasn't always been in orbit like that, and she hasn't always been this dead looking ball. But that's another story for another day, another way. <laughs> I tell you guys, lots has gone up there, on up there on that old moon. And that's why it's kind of a significant thing to us, you know. It's besides being the holder of the light at night, it's an energy anchor. It keeps the light energies uh, coming in at night too, you know. I mean... She's a multiplicity of duties being fulfilled right there in our sky, as is every star and every little speck of dust you see floating by. Everything has its purpose and fulfills it. And at this time, right now, June, what is it, 23? Yeah, I think that's what it is. Morning of June 23 in 2013. In this time frame... She represents a hell of a change. Now, as old human beings been kicking around here on this old rock, you know, for what, a few thousand years, a few hundred thousand years, a few million years, six thousand years, depends on who you talk to, but we've been here for a while, you know. And it seems like not much has changed over the centuries as we look back on the programmed history as we're taught you know and what little of it we remember within ourselves which is usually quite in contrast to what we're taught but anyway you go back in that history and, and there hasn't been a whole lot of change you know at least not in our visible history it seems like people have always been a bit nomadic they they tend to set down then stakes when they find a real nice place and say this is ours and we'll fight anybody for it and then wars go on you know and looting and raping of nations back and forth and the stealing of the women and the kids and shit you know and the taking over of countries i mean it's just been an obviously obscene existence for as far as we can see into our visible past, you know what I mean? The past that we're programmed with, the past that they tell us we have. It's been a warrior-like society from the word go. And even though we seem to be, quote, quote, a little more civilized, the stuff that goes on in the background here is just as equally as horrible as anything that's gone on through the ages. So in other words, there hasn't been that much improvement in the human existence in the visible history as we see it. I've always been warrior-like. You know, heck, look at you. Somebody screws you over, man, you got blood in your eye. You're ready to take care of them. <laughs> we have to get past these concepts of values and what's mine is mine and yours is yours and stuff like that. You know, we, 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 we need to move into a place where we see the unity, the equity in things, how everything serves 
uh, in with everything else and it all performs together to become one beautiful little symphony of life, you know, in which all experience a practical joy in every moment they exist. It doesn't matter if you're a little brick laying down here under my fireplace or you're the brightest star in the sky or a human being or something else in between, you know. It doesn't matter. Everything has life, as you can see, and experiences joy. How do we know this? Because we experience right along with it. This June 23 moon, this super moon as they call it. By the way, you're supposed to moon the moon this morning. So you got there and drop your drawers and give her a nice moon. I've done mine already this morning. <laughs> That's our way of telling the spatial energies to kiss our backside. Because you guys ain't been cooperating in sincere enough fashion. It's time for you to quit clowning around and playing with these government types and get down here and communicate with we the people. Don't you guys think? Let's put our energy towards that. Get those chicken little turkeys to come out of the sky and give us little more than a frickin' flyby. You know... If you want to expand consciousness on this planet, which we all do, and that's what this moon is all about, this big old full super moon. Hell, I've seen it a lot more super than that. God, it wasn't that long ago. Back in the 70s. Pretty sure it was around 78, because I think I was driving that old long-nosed Kenworth I used to drive in those days. So I'm pretty sure it was in 78. And I'm starting up over the Sierras, you know, coming up out of Auburn on I-80 there, going towards Reno, you know, and the sun's going down behind me, and, you know, I just got out of the most ungodly traffic jams down there in Sacramento and the Bay Area, you know, and I'm heading back over to Utah to make some kind of delivery or another, get another load of boats and head out, and, no, that wasn't boat hauling, that was grocery hauling I was doing then, so... Anyway, long story short, I had my load on, heading back to Salt Lake City, go get another load and go do something else. And son of a gun, you know, the sun's going down behind me and the eastern horizon just refuses to darken down. It just, in fact, it's starting to get brighter and brighter. And I'm looking at this as I'm climbing that old mountain. I'm thinking, hmm, what the hell? Well, that was a super moon, I'll tell you guys. When that thing peeked up over the horizon, goodness gracious, it like took up a third of the horizon already, you know, and time it came up to where you could really tell what it was as the sun went down behind us. Son of a gun. This thing covered two-thirds of the horizon. This moon did. It was huge. You could see the details of the craters and stuff. It was that close. And geez, oh, I thought, sure, we were all going to die. The earth and the moon was going to collide, and that was the end of everything. And I felt so bad because I wasn't going to be able to get home with my loved ones. You know, I was a young man, and it meant a lot to me then, you know. Shoot. Still does, of course, but it's a little different format now. But that old huge moon come up. I mean, I just had prickles and chills and stuff, and I couldn't believe it. Huge, huge, huge. It got up to about 50% of the rise before it actually started to shrink back down and I realized it was some kind of optical thing and not an actual physical closeness that was going to cause a collision. It's pretty amazing. That was a supermoon. I think that was about 1978, if I remember right. An amazing experience. But I cross-correlate that to this one here with this moon here. This is the opening we've waited for. This is the gateway. This is the happening. It's symbolic, yes, but energetically that energy has been pouring through the moon into your heart as this night has gone on. And as it reached, this moon reaches its apogee, its fullness. Well, babies, the gateways are open now. The energy has shifted and changed. And what this means is you can now more sufficiently turn, tune in to your own personal empowerment, which is absolutely the connection you feel with everything. And it's not just a natal thing. It doesn't just come through your navel, you know, in the generations past. It's the life that exists within and around you in any singular moment. And it's every moment that ever is living inside of you. It's the life of connection, 
of reawakening to that connection. Seeing the consciousness that has guided us and directed us from the beginning. So we can forgive ourselves for being warrior-like buttheads and get on with doing something nice for ourselves for a change. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Do we really want to live in this harsh, brutal world created of meanness where it's worse than doggy dog? Dogs are at least somewhat civilized with one another. Humans, well, guys, we've been sadly lacking. We have been disgraceful in our treatment of one another. And it's no wonder we can't find much within ourselves because we don't find much within anybody else around us, you know. You've got to wake up. You've got to know what's there. So, God, 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 well, don't let anybody tell you, God, this is what's happening now. That's just the way it is. It's the energy shift. Like I told you before, it's a shoe-in, man. You know, ascension's here. Consciousness is here. Presence is here. And those that have been running the government and positions of power in other organizations and so forth, you know what I mean. The, they're kind of running scared. They're afraid of the truth. Have been forever. That's why we've been afraid of it. Well, I mean, it's kind of a mutual thing, but we feared the truth because then our horrible secrets would be found out. And every person, as they gain a little age, has their secrets, whether they like it or not. It happens, you know. There's things you just don't want to talk about. Crap that's happened that was not pleasant. And it's best not remembered. Well, babies, we went through it for a reason and a purpose. Every bit of it. And there's joy in all of it. And the more conscious we become, the more aware of that we become and we don't longer feel ashamed for the things that have gone wrong in our life for whatever the reason. And we start to see it all as a continual flow in the right direction that was always bringing us home to our heart. No matter how many hundred thousand years it took, we've done it. We've come back to our heart. This is the beginning. This is the place. This is the area. This is the now and the Tao. This is all of it inside of you in this beautiful day. Oh my goodness. We're just way too serious this morning, ain't we? Yeah. Lighten up. That's the other secret of empowerment too. Just like the moon lightens up the night sky. Brighten up yourself inside, man. You know, let go of these feelings of shame, guilt, whatever it is that propels you, emptiness, you know, we've all made our mistakes. We've all suffered through our illusions. We've all died and come back to life many times over. And we've gained a vast amount of experience from it. And babies, when we finally do return to our little baby God selves, which is essentially what these little angelic human beings are, little baby gods, but we've been... Well, anyway, I'm not going to go into the whole theory and philosophy of it because that's what you're going to see it as. I want you to live it. I want you to remember it. I want you to know it. I want you to go through the experience I'm going through, awakening. You know, this is empowerment. When you can see and understand the peaceful nature in every moment that you've ever lived, because if you can see it in one moment, one agonizing moment, take one of the harshest moments in your life and go back there when you're in a meditative, communicative state and take a look and see what you see happening there. And you'll understand, even though it's stung and there is a sting in it and it hurt and still does the reverberations to this day, the behind that pain, there's a reality of joy. A place where your heart never gives up and only gains by every bit of experience it taxes you through or takes you through. So the joys and the highs as we experience them are every bit as valuable as the lows and the, the not-so-joys 
when we're going through our hard moments. It's all valuable. It's all added to us. When you can see this value, experience it, know it, which you're beginning to now, like it or not, then we become that who we are. You've gotten peace about the most horrible moment in your life or one of the most horrible. And babies, you can move on from there quite extensively. Now we're going to these places where our mind and heart become completely connected. We eliminate all the barriers inside that have stopped the heart consciousness from fully communicating with the mind and letting it see and observe in a whole different way. <laughs> Through the dimensions, as they say. <laughs> oh my! And so we're becoming multidimensional critters. Not so. We live in all these so-called dimensions at one time and one given moment. It takes a pretty huge leap for your mind to grasp that because we've been sitting down here on earth thinking we're condemned forever. You know, feeling the fall, feeling the first death inside of ourselves since God knows when and trying to work out that process. But we're finding here now where we can do that, we can understand it, we can see it, we can know it. And when we see that, we can trust that love, that life that flows through us, that's literally creating inside of us, creating inside of us, and moving us forward in any given moment, at any given time. So what we're finding is joy inside. So much so, Baby, there's going to be a lot more than dancing in the streets as this process goes on. But awakenings happening rather rapidly now. And don't let your fear of the truth stop you in any way. I don't care if you're a government lackey or first assistant to the Pope, something like that, where you've had to deal with a lot of secrets and stuff. And do a lot of unkind things to people. Baby, you can let go of it all. You were just there serving a row, just like the garbage man does, just like the little housewife with six kids down the street does, just like all of us do. We're in the same boat together, the same way I keep telling you all the time. One, but because of that, if one person steps ahead, everyone else has too. That's how it can come so rapidly. And in a relative term, so easily for the human race. We deserve it. We've been through our Armageddons again and again and again. And don't you believe we're going to tear up and blow up this world or that this earth is going to shake us off like a bunch of fleas. Baby, see what's really happening. You don't have to take my word for it or anybody else's. See what's really happened. Watch first in your own small little world, in your own small little life. Then start looking around. And of course, don't listen to the news media because they fucking lie. <laughs> <laughs> but it's easy to see through their lies. So you can listen to them if you want. I mean, you know, pretty soon you won't even be able to see the talking head on the screen because they're not really there. It's just all bullshit, you know. You wouldn't believe what's really going on in this world and how far we've taken it in the secret circles, the stuff that's hidden behind the scenes, but it doesn't really matter now. It's all being revealed because you're learning to be truthful inside of yourself. And as you do so, you are automatically surrounded by this aura, this air of empowerment, this love that softens the hearts of all those that you encounter. And as you come in contact with others who may have for some reason or other a harmful intent toward you, you're able to more than dissuade that. You turn them into little love muffins. Nobody, nothing can exist in your presence without being in the presence of the heart and therefore in love with itself and incapable of violent activities any longer. And this, but the beginning of the miracles you're going to see. 
You gather together with your tribe babies, those with whom you vibe. And I'm not talking your blood or your philosophical friends or anything like that. Though that might be elements in it. Just gather together with people who make you feel right about yourself. And you'll automatically be led in this direction. And as you do so, the combining of your happy love and energies, as you get through this difficult process of letting go all the crap we've been fed and all the programming that goes with it, <laughs> you begin to experience this joy on a more full level when you're gathered with others. And this joy compounds the effects of the love and radiation coming from you. And it spreads out and touches other areas of the world, other people's hearts. And those in position of power can no longer do these dastardly deeds. And this is how we bring peace on earth. It comes through the heart of the so-called common people, of all people, of all animals and plants too. But we're the focal point upon which Creation is focusing itself now. Because we're the babies about to be born again. Hallelujah, give me $50. <laughs> I hate the terminology, but there's not another way to describe it. And the pains and agonies and changes we've been going through here lately is about drove some people right over the edge. But all these changes leading in this direction. I mean, it's all leading to a settling. An emotional, spiritual settling, which leads to a physical settling, such as we've never known before. It's an end of the age of darkness. Well, of course, it's like the sun coming up in the morning. Right now, it's kind of like that. You know, as the moon goes down, the reflection's no longer necessary. The sun comes up, and we know it in the fullness of daylight. Yet the darkness still exists. There's a shadow, there's a contrast, there's color, there's texture form beauty to life it's almost incomprehensible yet we're in the center of that creation creating it right along with everything else we are the love of life for itself the love that allows it to experience any freaking thing and babies we have experienced it so happy summer solstice to you may you realize the extent of your empowerment this day. May it dawn upon you as this great sun rises in the sky and shines again, not just to the reflecting moon and to the growing Mother Earth and all of her children. But let this radiance be felt throughout the entirety of creation as we awaken and open the door for this creation to remember itself in the new way Interconnected, in other words, which is the same as it is in the beginning of time, the beginning of everything. For there is no beginning, and there is no end. Life exists forever. It just changes form and format and moves along. It loves creating new persons for itself to be in. And it loves being those new persons and experiencing the newness of it. Why do you think we were so easily enticed into this earth environment. <laughs> God, we are fallen angels, all right, and L.A. is lost angels, man, for sure. <laughs> but these angels being found now, just, just hang on to your, your riches, babies, and, and let's keep her going. Don't forget there's love in all of it. Experience your spatial truth right now, which means, you know, let it come in, babies. There's something here I'm trying to put into words that I can't quite achieve. It's something indescribable. So i just going to let you feel it for a moment. You know, just so you know. I mean, and you see, I'm letting go of my pain. Which means I'm filling it with light and love. I'm understanding that's what it is. And I've chosen this pain for the betterment of my own experience and for the betterment of all. Because I was strong enough to endure it. 
as I'm created now. As I take it forward with me and transform it into the joy that it truthfully is. I understand the heart in new ways. Find the fullness of my conscience presence within me today and begin to live my life in an entirely new way where I can make some semblance of truth in this world in which we live now. This world that seems like we're just a bunch of harsh little playthings. which tells us babies the things we've done so far are only but a scratch on the surface a drop in the bucket an idea of what we're capable of when you begin to comprehend the magnitude of what's happening here when you can let yourself relax enough to let that conception come into you again well, you're just going to be so pleased you're going to be dancing naked in the streets. What else can I say? That's just the way it is. That's life. That's rock and roll. Babies, I love you. Here's to a happy summer. Let's celebrate all summer long. Let's gather and project our energies and help this earth get to righteous rocking. Okay? I think it's a worthy goal. And this is a worthy journey. Gosh, I'm getting tired of talking about it, so you know I'm going to sign off here and we're going to go find something else to do. But I think I'll gather some people here today and we'll have a little round table of one sort or another. Man, there is so much we got going on. All we got to find now is the time to do it. The good shit, I mean, the fun stuff, the parties that are really parties and aren't just an excuse to get drunk and let it go. <laughs> the parties where we can really celebrate life. And these are just beginning to come to you in conceptual form now. It may take a bit for this new beginning to hatch out. But you'll be astounded what happens between here and July 4. You know, Maybe by Independence Day you'll be independent with liberty and justice for all. Who knows? These ain't just words, you know. They mean something. Something nobody's even suspected for a long time. With liberty and justice for all. That includes you who lives in any country, any tribe, any nation. We're not so arrogant as to think we're the only ones. We're just a part of it. And it's a good part and we'll be fine. All of us. Again, there's a conception I'm trying to conceive and convey to you. Help you calm down, not be so pissed off at the whole world. At God, God's not a boogeyman out there directing your life from external sources. See, it's great spirit. It lives inside of its creation, its love, its heart, its consciousness. You want to see God? Look inside yourself first and foremost. Want to know truth? Look inside. Peace, babies. Mother love and rock and roll. Let's get on with this show. Babies, I love you. Put your motor in.